In this vlog I explore two reoccurring themes and indeed concerns that I have. One, that we're heading into a techno dystopia, maybe including digital currencies, social credits and artificial dis intelligence decision making. Two, that sea theories do not originate from the common people, but powerful economic, even political interests including governments themselves. Uh, rather unexpectedly, the Chinese social credit system seems to provide some rather contradictory evidence on both of these themes. Let me first of all say that yes, I have visited China only once and some 15 years ago. And whilst I very much enjoyed staying in the rice terraces at Longsheng and Yangshu, I found the trip Trip. I found the, the whole trip very unsettling and maybe it was simply culture shock although coming from the UK and having lived in cities with major Chinese populations I expect this isn't the case or at least it's more nuanced but it would be fair to say that I'm no fan of China or at least its cities an old school friend of mine lived and worked in China and he has very similar experience and views as mine, as did my wife visit before I met her. Illustrating my, my less than positive experience in China was when visiting Tiananmen Square and attempting to take a taxi. The driver became very abusive and aggressive towards us. At the time I concluded that he was actually a member of a security service or undercover police officer just posing as a taxi driver. Uh, but in truth I have no idea. Such seeming rudeness being a common experience when visiting China. Added to this, there appeared to be no consumer protection, nor business ethics. Uh, whilst in all countries that I have visited that North Americans would define as communist, and let's not even get into that debate today, I found the locals to be capitalistic, but China took this to a new level. I often watch vlogs related to China, especially the political situation in China. On this platform, there are many vlogs predicting the imminent collapse of the Chinese economy and with it the Communist Party. But all too often, I'm left feeling that these appear to be, have been created to ferment trouble in China. A ferment which seems to be at odds with the observation that Chinese citizens are much more supportive of their government than citizens in the West appear to be. It's hard to say why I'm so sceptical of these vlogs, but one of my concerns is that they extrapolate Western values and structures onto China. You see, government in China is highly decentralised and it's in the towns and cities where the majority of the system decisions are taken. Despite impressive technical flagships, in the main China is very undeveloped and its local government is far less efficient and effective than is so often assumed. The social credit system is a national credit rating blacklist being developed in China. The social credit system involves the establishment of a record system so that businesses, individuals and government institutions can be tracked and evaluated for their trustworthiness. The national regulatory system is based on white listing, called red listing in China, and blacklisting. The original system can be traced back to the 1980s when the Chinese government attempted to develop a personal banking and financial credit rating system, especially for rural individuals and small businesses who lacked documented records. In January 2000, a research group from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences compiled their research into a text titled National Credit Management Scheme. Premier Zhu approved the text and instructed government figures from 10 ministries and commissions to begin studying the creation of a social credit management system. In March 2000, Zhu delivered the government's work report 
to the National People's Congress, in which Zhu talked about the need to rectify social credit in the context of supervision of financial institutions, fraud, tax evasion and debt repayments. The programme first emerged in the early 2000s, inspired by the credit scoring systems in the West, such as uh, FIFCO, Equifax and TransUnion. The programme initiated regional trials in 2009, before launching a national pilot with eight credit scoring firms in 2014. However, Alibaba's Sesame credit system was based on these Western models, which the People's Bank of China eventually denied its credit licence. The social credit system is an extension of the existing legal and financial credit rating systems in China. It's managed by the National Development and Reform Commission, NDRC, the People's Bank of China, PBOC, and the Supreme People's Court, SPC. The system was intended to standardise the credit rating and perform financial and social assessments for business, government, institutions and individuals. The Chinese government's stated aim is to enhance trust in society with the system and regulate business in areas such as food safety, intellectual property and financial fraud. Although the system has had far-reaching objectives, uh, the, the, major, the, the major issues issue it sought to address was the irresponsible behaviour of some companies and local governments, especially as the Supreme People's Court had no ability to enforce its decisions. In particular, whilst companies with debts could be taken to the court and lower courts, most ignored their verdicts. In 2003, the Supreme People's Court of China started a blacklist. The SPC's blacklist is composed of Chinese companies and some citizens, but often the business owners. They refuse to comply with the court orders, typically a fine or repayment of the loan, despite having the ability to do so. It is hosted online at the Supreme People's Court Judgment Default of Blacklist Portal, and the information is shared with Credit China and the National Enterprise Credit Information Publicity System. The SPC also began working with private companies such as Sesame Credit, who began deducting credit points from people who defaulted on court fines. Contrary to Western media, there is no single credit system or score in China. Social credit is a fragmented set of policies and systems which impact businesses more than individuals, including financial credit reporting, a blacklist for debtors based on specific court orders, sector blacklists and red lists, addressing non-compliance and compliant companies and their owners. No fly, no ride lists based on specific instances of train or plane passenger misconduct and voluntary local programmes which can provide rewards based on individual scores but no penalties. Furthermore, these schemes are all pilot schemes, many of which have now ended and most are deemed to have failed. Indeed, by 2023, most private social credit initiatives had been shut down by the People's Bank of China and regulations had cracked down on the most local, um, most local scoring pilot programmes. In 2002, a paper from Mercator Institute for China Studies, or Merix in Germany, found that the only social credit programmes that continue to have personal scores of individuals are strictly for issuing positive incentives only. Under some policies, higher scores can earn the participant cheaper public transportation, shorter security lines in subways or tax reductions. Furthermore, these pilots were voluntary and the majority of residents in the areas they covered were completely unaware of their existence. Indeed, Merricks concluded the following all to be common misconceptions. There is no score which detects a citizen's place in society. The social credit scheme is not primarily a tool for mass surveillance of society. The social credit scheme does not constantly monitor and assess human behaviour. It is low-tech and fragmented. It will not 
it will not be completely uh, completed and implemented in the near future. As of 2022, over 62 different social credit system pilot programmes were implemented by local government. Nevertheless, there, there, were, some, there were some highly authoritative examples within individual pilots. For example, in Beijing, inappropriate behaviour on rapid transport systems, including loud music or eating, except for infants and sick people, could result in a negative record in the local credit profiles. Guangzhou residents who cheat in national, provincial or municipal examinations receive a negative record in their credit profiles. And Guangzhou residents who fraudulently use other people's public transportation identification cards or fake ID cards or occupy the seats of others may receive a negative record in their credit profiles. In Hangzhou, uh, those who do, not, who do not comply with the waste sorting rules of the city will receive a negative record in their credit profiles and will have to pay a corresponding amount of fine. Jinan City dog owners lose three points for keeping their dogs off a leash in public places allowing the dogs to disturb other people, not cleaning up after their dogs, etc. And moped drivers and pedestrians who make five or more traffic violations, including failure to stop at a red light, in a year, will receive a negative record in their credit profiles. In Nanjing, Shenzhen residents, who, who are at least 14 years old, who violate traffic rules, such as jaywalking and crossing at a red light, once caught, will receive a negative record in their credit profiles. Also in Shenzhen, traffic violations of motor vehicles or moped drivers, uh, such as inappropriate use of high beam or drunk driving, may be recorded in their credit profiles of drivers. Shuzhou City, 25 types of residence behaviour, will cost a drop in their credit scores, including cheating in online video games, and making reservations at hotels or restaurants but not showing up, failure to pay mobile phone bills promptly, failure to pick up their takeout, foods, food ordering, etc. Allegedly, this pilot initially included deducting points for government petitions and online comments. Conversely, making blood donations or doing volunteer work may boost one's credit score. Not only is there no national credit score scheme, there's no system for collating data from various local pilots. Indeed, there is no uniform system for collating data, nor even uniform guidance on what should be collected. In the main local pilots who did record data systematically, it was done on an Excel, it was done on an Excel spreadsheet. And while some local pilots may have used data from security cameras, all this is a long way from the dystopian face recognition cameras using artificial intelligence to identify offender and automatically restricting their human rights, such as freedom of movement on public transport. In fact, the communist government has stated that artificial intelligence should never be used to penalise individuals nor organisations and their recommendations should always be checked by a human. In 2020, the rights protection metrics in the NDRC City Credit Status Monitoring and Early Warning Indicators stated that cities must establish transparent credit repair procedures handled within an appropriate time frame. It also emphasised that cities should prevent the overgeneralisation of the concept of credit, stating that individual behaviour, such as petitioning government, unpaid property fees, running red lights, must not be included in a person's credit record. The new blacklist should not be created on an ad hoc basis and that social credit should not be applied in policy areas without sufficient consensus. As I say, few Chinese are even aware of the credit score scheme, uh, but studies, largely by German universities, 
have found a 1% disapproval rating. Yes, 1%. But, <coughs> but also that the more repressive it is, the lower the approval, and that it fails to promote better behaviour and social cohesion, however it's implemented. Furthermore, the systems are far from being terminal. In 2020, the Supreme People's Court announced that a nationwide total of 7.51 million blacklisted judgment defaulters had fulfilled their legal obligations and been removed from the judgment defaulters blacklist, accounting for half the blacklisted judgment defaulters as of that date. MIT's technology review stated, in the West, the system is highly controversial and is often portrayed as an AI-powered surveillance regime that violates human rights. Many scholars argue that credits, social credit scores won't have a wide-scale controlling effect, presumed. The system acts more as a tool of propaganda than a tool of enforcement. Others point out that it's simply an extension of Chinese culture's long tradition of promoting good moral behaviour and that Chinese citizens have a completely different perspective on privacy and freedom. The Jamestown Foundation concluded that there were widespread misrepresentations regarding the function and mechanism of the social credit system. Many failed to distinguish between the government regulations and private credit rating systems. Corporations hyperbolically promoted the school's predictive abilities. What seems to be missing is why would the Chinese government develop such an all-encompassing system covering the entire population, the vast majority of whom are well behaved, when they already have a vast array of covert tools which they can suppress, with which they can suppress targeted groups of dissidents. Given that these myths have been widely reported and repeated uh, by the likes of Jordan Peterson, should we not be asking who is responsible for this campaign of misinformation? And let's face it, this isn't the first time that I've been taken in by such misinformation. In these days when international news in the West is seemingly less and less reliable, could it simply be Western powers seeking to undermine the Chinese government? Although I might add that like all such campaigns, it's also having a negative effect in those countries promoting the myth. I suspect this is the origin, but maybe the per perpetuation also belies other interests that have jumped on the bandwagon. I've many times repeated my belief that the vendors of artificial intelligence have hyped its abilities, be it positive or negative, simply to sell more systems. However distasteful the majority may find decisions taken by artificial intelligence, there have to be despots around the world, be they political or business leaders, who think otherwise. And maybe I should include in this that US vendors of artificial intelligence have lobbied federal government by creating a fear that China is already ahead of the West are based on having access to more data, something that I have repeated. Uh, that this technological superiority is an issue of national security, which requires military investment and a benign regulatory environment. Furthermore, in the West, decisions are being taken by artificial intelligence, which are dynamically curtailing the enjoyment of life and human rights of, of its citizens. And my own inability to get satisfaction satisfaction from bots running uh, from bots running its customer service operations is a minor example but nevertheless annoying for me more sinister is my debanking by the royal bank of scotland so here is the real concern that i have does the perpetuation of these myths hide the real erosion of human rights in the west after all most theories theories have a nugget of truth which corresponds to our own experience or we wouldn't believe them and so they often hide real collusion behind the scenes 
an erosion which appears to be more driven by the commercialisation of public services, such as payment systems, and more so than a desire for authoritarian control, although may well win government approval based on this dubious feature. In the UK, credit schools are now widely used to access a range of services, some essential and some government services, such as, such as access by the needy to social services. In the US, many services are now only available online and those using online payment options, something that's becoming increasingly apparent in Jakarta, where even mid-range restaurants no longer accept cash. Furthermore, during the health crisis, our access to shopping malls, government offices and public transport were all dependent on our status on a digital ID card. Uh, Venezuela has introduced smart ID card system using Chinese technology, which includes a wealth of data many would consider to be private. Whilst Russia is developing a system which appears to be based on the most dystopian elements of the myth, for its own citizens. Mm -hmm.